This is a bomb. This is a fuse. In the case of Iran's nuclear plans to build a bomb, this bomb has to be filled with enough enriched uranium. And Iran has to go through three stages. The first stage, they have to enrich enough low enriched uranium. The second stage, they have to enrich enough medium enriched uranium. And the third stage and final stage, they have to enrich enough high enriched uranium for the first bomb. Where's Iran? Iran's completed the first stage. It took them many years, but they completed it, and they're 70 percent of the way there. Now they're well into the second stage. And by next spring, at most, by next summer, at current enrichment rates, they will have finished the medium enrichment and move on to the final stage. From there, it's only a few months, possibly a few weeks, before they get enough enriched uranium for the first bomb. Ladies and gentlemen, what I've told you now is not based on secret information. It's not based on military intelligence. It's based on the public reports of the International Atomic Energy Agency. Anybody could read them. They're online. So if these are the facts, if these are the facts, and they are, where should a red line be drawn? A red line should be drawn right here. Before, before Iran completes the second stage of nuclear enrichment necessary to make a bomb, before Iran gets to a point where it's a few months away or a few weeks away from amassing enough enriched uranium to make a nuclear weapon. Now each day that point is getting closer. And that's why I speak today with such a sense of urgency. And that's why everyone should have a sense of urgency. Now there are some who claim that even if Iran completes the enrichment process, even if it crosses that red line that I just drew, our intelligence agencies will know when and where Iran will make the fuse, assemble the bomb, and prepare the warhead. Look, no one appreciates our intelligence agencies more than the Prime Minister of Israel. All these leading intelligence agencies are superb, including ours. They foiled many attacks. They've saved many lives. But they are not foolproof. For over two years, our intelligence agencies didn't know that Iran was building a huge nuclear enrichment plant under a mountain. Do we want to risk the security of the world on the assumption that we would find in time a small workshop in a country half the size of Europe? Ladies and gentlemen, the relevant question is not when Iran will get the bomb. The relevant question is at what stage can we no longer stop Iran from getting the bomb? The red line must be drawn on Iran's nuclear enrichment program because these enrichment facilities are the only nuclear installations that we can definitely see and credibly target. And I believe that faced with a clear red line, Iran will back down. And this will give more time for sanctions and diplomacy to convince Iran to dismantle its nuclear weapons program altogether. Two days ago from this podium, President Obama reiterated that the threat of a nuclear armed Iran cannot be contained. I very much appreciate the President's position, as does everyone in my country. 
We share the goal of stopping Iran's nuclear weapons program. This goal unites the people of Israel. It unites Americans, Democrats, and Republicans alike. And it is shared by important leaders throughout the world. What I have said today will help ensure that this common goal is achieved. Israel is in discussions with the United States over this issue. And I am confident that we can chart a path forward together. Ladies and gentlemen, the clash between modernity and medievalism did not be a clash between progress and tradition. The traditions of the Jewish people go back thousands of years. They are the source of our collective values, the foundations of our national strength. At the same time, the Jewish people have always looked towards the future. Throughout history, we've been at the forefront of efforts to expand liberty, promote equality, and advance human rights. We champion these principles not despite of our traditions, but because of them. We heed the words of the Jewish prophets Isaiah, Amos, and Jeremiah to treat all with dignity and compassion to pursue justice and cherish life, and to pray and strive for peace. These are the timeless values of my people, and these are the Jewish people's greatest gift to mankind. Let us commit ourselves today to defend these values so that we can defend our freedoms and protect our common civilization. Thank you. On behalf, of the, on behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank the Prime Minister of the State of Israel for the statement just made. And I request the protocol to escort His Excellency.